Hope you're having a great Friday evening. We are two days into fall. It's been kind of a quiet start, but if we take a look at the surface map, we've got another strong cold front coming out of the northern plains. Back behind it, it's getting a little bit cooler, starting to see some low to mid 60s during the afternoon. Along that frontal boundary, we've got a few showers and maybe even a few storms in northern Wisconsin down towards Omaha and Kansas. Out ahead of that front, it's warm, but not quite like summer. Look at those dew points. Lots of 40s, which is very dry for this time of year. So that's indicating that this air has a northerly source region up in Canada. That air has moved south over the past few days and has stagnated in the southeastern quarter of the U.S. Further out to the west, an upper-level disturbance. We've been talking about that for a few days. That's a trough that is sheared off from the prevailing westerlies. And at this point right now, it's over Arizona, and we're expecting that to drift gradually eastward over the weekend. A good way to see that trough is to look at the water vapor imagery. We're looking at the west coast of the U.S. over here and the North Pacific out here. And what we're going to focus on is this disturbance. The blue shades indicate very large amounts of mid and upper level moisture. The orange and yellow indicate low amounts. First of all, we see it approach the coastal regions right there. And you can see that bow right there, indicative of cold air advection in the wake. And this here is the vorticity signature, the turning of the winds in the upper levels. That's a baroclinic low up there off the Oregon coast. So down on the tail end, that's where we tend to get new cyclogenesis. And we roll that forward. You can see how that migrates as a dry system into California. and Gradually, as it settles in in the southwestern U.S., you can see it coalesce there, a few storms going up due to the colder mid-level temperatures. And at the very end there, you can kind of see it closing off. You can see that ripple where we form that comma shape, and that's the genesis of that upper-level low. And towards the very end, you can see it spinning out there over Yuma. Our obligatory lookup in the North Pacific does show that it remains stormy. We're definitely in a cold air advection pattern, still pumping that cold air out from the continental regions out into the mid-latitude oceanic areas. Up in the interior regions, that snow is still coming down, still looking at 30s during the midday hours up there in Alaska, and some 20s starting to show up. If we take a look at the Wikipedia entry for Fairbanks, we can see that normally we should have a high of about 55 and a low of 36. Now, if we shift that a little bit towards October, because, you know, it is getting into late September, we should be seeing a high of about 50 and a low of about 30. And we're certainly on the low end of that because those 33 degree temperatures are midday temperatures. So that is a cold air mass with below normal temperatures. The Atlantic in eastern Canada, likewise, showing a strong cold air advection pattern right there, spilling out from the Labrador Sea along the coast of Newfoundland. Another strong baroclinic system across Quebec and a little cold air advection system coming out of Manitoba producing a little bit of shower activity in that region. And this is a good time to take a look at the upper air chart. This is 300 millibars up at about 30,000 feet. And we see prevailing westerlies from the Pacific across the continental area of the U.S. into the Atlantic. Strong winds up there in central Canada, and you can see detached from those prevailing westerlies, a upper level low. That's a cutoff low. 
the subtropical high kind of easing back towards Hawaii, and likewise easing back southeast of Bermuda. So we are looking at a transition season pattern right now. So just a quick look forward. Looks like that low is slow to move out of Arizona, so we should see above average precipitation chances in that part of the country. We are looking at the weather for Sunday evening here. A band of very strong winds coming into the Pacific Northwest. So getting stormy up there in Seattle. Looks pretty quiet across the central part of the U.S. And then going into next week, the attention focuses up there in the Northwest with this new frontal system and the departing cutoff low moving up into Colorado. The trough moves in from the west for Thursday and Friday, very slow moving. Another cutoff low shears off out there in Arizona. And another low shearing off along the northeast U.S. coast. And then going into next weekend, unsettled on the east coast with that cutoff low, spinning off the coast of Virginia and the southern low crossing the central Rockies. The National Hurricane Center showing an unusually quiet weather pattern for this time of year. It is mid to late September, so we do expect to see a lot of activity out there in the Atlantic and Gulf, but not much going on. However, Sam, this is already a hurricane moving towards the Leeward Islands and the track on that looks like it's going to go just to the north. However, it is projected to be a major hurricane, possibly Cat 3, maybe even low-end Cat 4. We'll have to see on that. But let's take a look at that track. We go to the GFS for those details. Five days out, it's not going to have a great handle on the track, but we can run that forward, watch the right side of the screen. There comes Sam just north of the Leeward Islands, and it looks like that remains out to sea and remains east of Bermuda. So we're not expecting much from that. However, yeah, look at that little low off the New Jersey coast, maybe a little Fujiwara effect going on. I'm not sure if that's, I don't know, is that is that extra tropical? I'm not 100% sure. I would say that that probably is a tropical storm. We're looking at uh, the weekend after this weekend, so the first or second day of October. So, of course, that will have to be monitored. And the other thing that we see here, just looking into the continental region, a very large 1031 millibar high. This is 280 hours out, so not 100% sure that that's going to happen. But we are certainly seeing indications of colder than average temperatures going into October. And speaking of temperatures, no record highs for this afternoon. We are coming close in Stockton, California with 95, but that's not going to break any records. And also looks like a very hot day in Miami and Key West. For Saturday, the heat remains mostly confined to Colorado, where temperatures will be in the mid-80s. The heat spreads out into the central plains for Sunday. Temperatures coming up in the low and mid-90s in Kansas and Oklahoma. Then for Monday, the heat spreads into the Midwest. So that burst of refreshing weather looks like that's come to an end, and summer is trying to build right back in. And then for Tuesday, heat focuses on the Northern Plains and Mobridge in South Dakota, likely tying their record of 88 set in 1995. A look at the National Drought Monitor shows what appears to be a perpetual drought in the western U.S., stretching all the way up into the Dakotas. Some of that drought extending into Oklahoma, bringing up the wildfire risk, and down in Texas, no drought indicated, but the vegetation is starting to get kind of dry. 
Can't really talk about droughts without talking about California, and they've got the wildfire problems there. You can see right there, major fire, about 56,000 acres burned. That's going to be the windy fire, and that's just kind of what it's named. It's not a meteorological term. However, it seems aptly named with that plume extending out over Santa Barbara. A couple of other fire complexes in there. We have the French fire the Walker's Fire, and the KMP Complex, but those don't appear to be active at this time. Things looking fairly good up there in Northern California. And it looks like Oregon has gotten a handle on their problem too. So that should put an end to those giant plumes of smoke coming out over the eastern U.S. A nice day in Washington, but that should be short-lived as that next weather system approaches from the west. A rare MCS south of Yuma, way off there to the left of the screen, that's going to be it right there. Most of the body of that is in Mexico, and it looks like that's propagating to the south. Most of what's over Yuma and the deserts appears to be mostly anvil debris. Same out in Phoenix and Ajo and up towards Kingman. However, new storms going up on the Mogollon Rim and out around Mount Lemmon in Tucson. Not much to talk about in Texas, just kind of a quiet day. Little upper level energy passing over the Red River region. Further north, a dry front moving through Nebraska. There's that cold air advection there. And the tropical air laying just to the south. Well, it's not really tropical air. It's recycled polar air that's picked up a little moisture through evapotranspiration. But only when we get further up to the northeast in eastern Iowa, we pick up the convective elements. And there's how that looks. Kind of appears to be elevated storms moving into Wisconsin. Don't see much of a low cloud field except immediately up along the surface boundary. SPC, not particularly concerned, just a general thunderstorm risk area for that region. And storm reports looking pretty sparse. Bringing those dew points down into the 40s in the southeastern U.S., we really clear things out. So it's look, looking a whole lot less like summer except down in Florida, where we find the tail end of that stationary front. And south of that in the tropical air, some big storms going near Fort Myers, the Everglades, and Miami. And then a quick check of the northeast, a cold air advection pattern. We're definitely very familiar with that, seeing a lot of that last spring. There it is, bringing in some stratocumulus into that area, some drying and clearing. And out ahead of it, convective elements where we have some of the tropical moisture working northward. And that's a closer look at it in the heart of Quebec. That's the St. Lawrence River. Certainly it looks like a kind of a weak MCS moving across Quebec there. And as you go further to the east or to the west, we pick up the cold core right there. And that's probably where we're going to find the 500 millibar low. Can see that spin there and a few convective elements trying to get going where there's been a tiny bit of solar heating. And I think that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and everybody else. We will see you here on Wednesday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.